Okay, so I know we're primarily a comedy show, so I'm going to apologize in advance for this week's diatribe. It's a sad one. So if you normally listen to this show on the way to work to get a few laughs in through the commute, maybe you skip ahead to the headlines and you listen to this bit some other time because I'm going to be talking about death this week and not in the abstract. So if you've been to an atheist convention in the last decade or so anywhere in the Northern Hemisphere, there's a pretty solid chance that you met Deborah McTaggart while you were there. And if you met her, it's highly unlikely you wouldn't remember it. She was crazy short. Her hair was about two shades off of a fire hydrant. And she was gregarious for a Canadian. And even if you never made it to conventions, there's a pretty good chance you knew her as Heretic Woman from Beyond the Trailer Park. She was very much a member of the family of atheist podcasters that I'm proud to lend my fraternity to and a cherished member at that. She wasn't just the kind of person that everybody liked. She was the kind of person that you couldn't even envision somebody disliking. And I say was because on Sunday morning of this past week, she died in her sleep. Uh, she was a frighteningly young 46 years old. And she was a listener, she was a colleague, and she was a friend. She liked Lucinda more than me, but to be fair, everybody who knows us does. And Lucinda's about the only person on the planet that could make her feel tall, so that probably factored into it. As well, But my world definitely got a little darker when I saw the news on Facebook this week. So what do we do, right? I'm, I mean, we're atheists. There are a lot of differences between us and religious folks, but this is kind of the main one, isn't it? The fact that they get to hide in an imaginary shelter when storms like this come and pretend they didn't get wet. I mean, I still contend that religion doesn't help people, you know, when their loved ones die. And as evidence of that, I'd offer up every funeral ever. But at least it helps them ignore the real hard parts, right? But not us. We have to take death right in the fucking heart all at once. And, and that's hard to do, but, but it's what your loved ones deserve, right? We shouldn't rob them of their totality to paper over our own fears. What, what Deborah was is all she will have ever been. And love it or leave it, she was the author of every bit of it, right? She, she was the thing she did and the words she said and the people she touched. And we don't get to co-op that and write a fourth act fanfic where we get to see her again someday at the great big reason con in the sky. She gets sole ownership of her life and our fantasies, no matter how comforting, shouldn't dilute that. But, but that's when atheism is at its best, too, right? When it forces you to learn the lessons that death teaches. We can't cop out behind euphemisms because th they all try to spackle over the finality of it, right? We can't say she's resting in peace because she's not resting. We can't say she's in a better place because she's in the ground. And we can't say she's looking down on us because she's dead. So what can we say? Goodbye, right? That's it. But we can say it better than anybody else in the world because we can say it all the way. And we're not saying goodbye to her, by the way. We, we, she can't hear us, right? There's no reason to talk to the person who's died. We're saying goodbye to life on behalf of ourselves and everyone else. We're nodding to the impermanence of life and reaping whatever lesson that has for us. And look, I know that's no real comfort, but that's not because our worldview is flawed. It's because death just isn't comfortable. Nothing we pluck from an antiquated book is going to change that, or an unantiquated book for that matter. Death is terrifying, and one death makes you think about all of them, your own, your spouses, your friends. And when reality asks you to do something like confront the idea of life carrying on without you, or, or carrying on your own life without somebody that you need there, it's tempting to hide from that. As a species, we've built churches, temples, and pyramids to hide in, and even when none of them worked, we kept building more. But no matter what we put between ourselves and death, death is going to get through. You know, if we ever find a cure, I'll be in line with everybody else, but we haven't. Death is reality, and to hide from one is to hide from the other. To be an atheist is to look death squarely in the face and say, I know. You know, there's no clause in there that says you can't be scared shitless when you do, but you have to do it. It's the only initiation we have. So why do it? Why not just lie to ourselves and make it easy? There are whole institutions that would be happy to indulge us in this pleasant fantasy for a reasonable price. Well, the, the fact that Deborah's religious and atheist friends had the exact same amount of grief to deal with on Sunday is a pretty strong argument in favor of saving your money, but it isn't the best one. The best one is Deborah herself. See, she was a person who perfectly exemplified what it was to know all of this shit in advance, Right To have looked death in the face and acknowledged it. She was an exemplar of what it's like to live one's life knowing that every interaction could be the last one you ever have with that person. It doesn't matter who you are. The last time you talked to her, the last time you saw her, it was damn pleasant. 
You know, we don't score uh, lives the way that religions do, where they weigh your good against your bad, or, or worse yet, weighing your adherence to your religion over and above everything else. The only way we can measure a life from our perspective is how much darker the world gets when that life stops. And my world got a lot darker last Sunday. And because that's pretty much impossible to transition to comedy from, I feel the need to make it clear that we recorded the rest of the show before I decided that this was going to be the topic of the diatribe. Um, had that not been the case, we'd have been a little bit more solemn at the start of the headline. So, you know, from here on, comedy. <laughs> 